Okay, we can begin in five, four, three, two, one. Fragments of silicon, guaranteed safer than ingots of uranium. <laughs> say debatable i guess it could hurt more if they stabbed you but it's less likely to get you radiation and my, my <laughs> other my, my, my other choice oh, was oh look, at the, oh look at that it's time for adam to do the introduction yeah i'm like yeah welcome to another uh, episode of fragments of silicon um as you can tell max back Woo! yeah <laughs> how long has it been <laughs> well i think i was here like two weeks ago maybe three I, I've honestly lo lost track. Like, I'm trying to be here more often than not, you know, I since I made everybody change the time frame and all that, so. Yeah. It's just, well, we'll get to that when we get to that. Right. Anyway, um, and as always, the regular crew is here. Uh, Petty Fan. Yo. Ogre. Yo, yo. Twilight. Hey. And Golly. Thank you for saving me from having to be the combo breaker on that. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, technically, you still are. Oh, yeah. All right, let's get to, to the news. Max, since it's been a while, you're up first. All right, well, if all goes well, God willing, Keith and I will have a rough cut of the teaser act of episode two of Starship Moonhawk this weekend. Oh, man. Of course, that's one of those my lips to God's ears moments, so I've probably jinxed the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And now everything falls apart. <laughs> um, so there's that. Uh, comics are updating. Mm, let's see. I'm watching Lost in Space. If you haven't mm -hmm. seen it, the find it. One? Mm -hmm. I got, I'm trying to clear some stuff off of my queue. Like, oh, I'm yeah. Get, like, I'm trying to get through um, a series of unfortunate events, season two. Oh, someone at the game store today said they they tried watching Lost in Space, but they had to object to the uh, treatment of ice. Ice in one of the episodes, like actual ice or yeah, ice? like actual ice. Like ice doesn't work that way. You mean like, like they're tr they're trying to melt the they're trying to melt the ice with magnesium? No, like the ice freezes over something in a way that I I do, I, I just heard that they had some issues with it, and they seemed like silly issues. It's lost in space. This is a show that one. Uh, I am aware of the. Yes, I am aware of that. I was just saying what I heard. This this version is vastly, vastly more science fictiony and serious than the original. It's I more like the, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. There's a bar of ridiculousness here that. Yeah, this yeah. series is not funny at all. That's what I'm trying to say. Is it's not a. It's not a comic. Very briefly. The original series got kind of messed over because Dr. Smith took over the whole show. And so it became it became about his villainy alliteration, and it stopped being about the Robinsons, and it was about him and the robot and Will, and yeah. Anyway, this one is not like that. I mean, it's very dramatic. It's very, t it's very gritty. Um, I loved every minute of it. So, you know, that's, that's the takeaway from it, is that aside from riffing on the john williams theme song in the end credits there is and the names of the characters there is virtually no relationship between this series and the original whatsoever i'm glad we've established this it's about as far apart as say the orville is removed from family guy to give you a rough idea for anybody who's in the know um so that's why i was quite impressed with it um and yeah anyway who cares moving on <laughs> anything yeah. else newsworthy uh, not really i was going to talk something about games but i've got nothing so move on <laughs> all right um ogre you're up next since you've got an anniversary to plug 
Uh, yep. Yeah. It's our 10 year anniversary of doing Let's Plays on YouTube. Kind of surprising how many other people have 10 year anniversaries. Yeah, almost like you started in the Let's Play boom or something. Yeah, pretty much. Mm. Um, so, yeah, we've been doing games that we've been meaning to get to here and there. Started that last year, but we're going to continue it on till basically, I don't know, we get bored and quit or the earth goes up in flames somehow. <laughs> or something but, uh, occurs. Like, you know, I find that uh, interesting considering you're doing games right now that have nothing to do with the list. Like, well, I mean, our first game was Kirby, so. Right. <laughs> I'm sure Kirby games are on the list. It's just Kirby Star Allies probably wasn't. No, it came out at the perfect time to do everything, so yeah, yeah. it all worked out. See, so also uh, let's see. So yeah, we're doing that. Finished up Kirby, the main story. Got the other stuff to do. We'll see how long that takes us. I have really no investment to do the super hard, extremely savage, extreme hard, super chocolatey death mode stuff of arena, so don't don't expect much on that, but um, other than that, yeah, we'll do Kirby for about maybe a couple more weeks, and then we'll move on to something else. We haven't decided on that yet. Uh, let's see. In personal news, I went to the optometrist the other day. Don't need did, new did glasses you you anytime be soon. So, it the prescription is at best subtly different, but not enough to get need new glasses. And I finally had them take a look at that screw on the left side. Turns out the screw had been stripped, and that's why it kept trying to fall out every time I tried to clean it. <laughs> so got that replaced so that'll oh, do it. it won't fall apart anymore now yay and uh, other than that in the, other than that news in the weather fucking what <laughs> that'll go inside with mine when we get to it <laughs> yeah we had uh, we didn't have any snow that stuck but there was still snow and I think Tomorrow, it's either tomorrow or Friday. It's supposed to warm up some, but it's supposed to be like this weird peak of like, uh, we, uh, and then it'll constantly get better. And then I'll finally think, I think we'll finally hit spring in the last month of spring. <laughs> Somehow, for some reason. Isn't spring already over? No, no, spring doesn't end till June. Right, spring doesn't start until right, March. Late March. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, other than that, that's all from my camp. All right. ABD, uh, not a cult. See you at the convention. Woo! Okay. Twilight? Well, let's see here now. <clears throat> um, we've had some snow here as well. And I'm wondering if we're ever going to leave winter season completely behind. <laughs> um, anyway, um... There's still a road, uh, work being done on the road, um, going out of here or uh, from where I'm, to where I live. And there's some days where I'm wondering how long they're going to work on it for because there's one day where they had to shut the road down for almost eight hours. And, um, and leave work, uh, work early to avoid that. Um, and, um, that seems also lead to my mother getting a flat tire that we had to go get taken care of um, Sunday. And um, since there was a screw in the tire. And um, let's see now what else. Um, nothing much um, else significant. Um, been playing the games for a um, review this Sunday, and that's it for me. Alright. Alex? Um, 
The weather's been up and down here, too. There hasn't been any actual snow here, although I think there's some in the northern part of the state, but we've had some freezing rain that was kind of a pain. Um, I'm feeling much better than I had been last time, so that's good. Um, let's see. My birthday was last Friday. I had a nice, relaxing day. I took it off work because I had some rollover hours to use up. Um... Crap, I had stuff I wanted to say, but I can't remember most of it. Um, well, then. <laughs> I guess it wasn't that important. Uh, I didn't, I've still been playing Digimon Lynx, even though it's not that great. And the current event is uh, frustrating me a little bit, because it's one of those ones where it's really designed to eat up your currency. Hmm. Um, oh yeah, I was going to talk about the uh, my computer lately I've been having some trouble with and it seems like I have either something in the computer itself or one of the programs that I use regularly seems to have some kind of gradual memory leak that the longer I leave it on, uh, the more <laughs> sluggish it gets, which I know that happens to a lot of computers, but it's been getting more dramatic lately, so I'm probably going to have to start restarting my computer or turning it off more often than I do, which thankfully is less troublesome than it used to be since various internet browsers are much better at storing memories and stuff. Um, I still need to get a new fan for my top fan slot in my computer because I had to take that out because I was making a lot of noise. But uh, yeah, other than that, I don't have a whole lot going on, I guess. <laughs> Okay, sorry, sorry. Oh, let's see. Well, in the past week, we've experienced all four seasons. It went from about in the 80s on Friday, 50s on Saturday, snow on Sunday, and then Monday. And then it's been kind of hovering around the 50s. So, yeah. Missouri weather at its finest. Um, let's see. I also opened up a I also changed bank accounts Saturday because the fees for my old bank were outrageous. And because my dad served in the Navy, the bank we go to now, I get a free checking account as long as he's on there. His his like it's basically a joint account type thing. So, yay, no more fees. <laughs> and... Oh, let's see. I've been... I actually, well, got us today's guest, so that was fun. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, other than that... Um, oh yeah, today is my cat Luna's ninth birthday, so yay. Yay. I feel old now. <laughs> you don't get to say that. <laughs> yeah, I was, gonna, I was about to say. Um. <laughs> um, and I think that's about it. Like, just been kind of playing Final Fantasy fourteen and trying to catch up on Monster Hunter, which I think the um, spring event ends like, it's either tonight or it ended last night. I need to look. But yeah, other than that, I think I'm good. Alright, uh, let's see. I guess it's my go. Mm -hmm. um, uh, thankfully, I'm pleased to report that uh, Oh, I got a backup mouse today. Um, been meaning to get that for a while and saw a good deal on Amazon. For uh, right. Amazon deals. Yeah. Oh, it was like eight bucks. So, even though it's wired, it's just need to have something in case, you know, in case the current mouse fails. I actually prefer wired mouses. Mice. Mises. Mm -hmm. So do I. Mice. Like, yeah. The plural of mouse is mice. So, like, it's a gamer mouse, 
So it's got like programmable buttons. Those are the best if you know what you're doing. Is it at least a, is it at least a smooth one or is it one of those ones that looks like it's made out of oddly screwed together plates of plastic? Um, the second. It's really edgy. Like, oh boy. I don't <laughs> like those. Yeah. Well, that's why. I, that's one of the reasons why I'm using my my reliable Logitech. Like, mm. it's all smooth. Yeah. It, it looks like a normal mouse. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it, it, that was a backup mouse that I bought. Right. Not something I, I would actively use because it looks fucking ridiculous, like gaming mouse look. I mean, I get the purpose of it is to have all the pieces be separately adjustable to make it perfect fit for you, but I still think they're hideous. Yeah, so do I. But I wasn't saying no to eight bucks. So. Right. <laughs> no. And mm, yeah, the weather here has been topsy turvy for Florida. That is to say, we had a cold snap. Um, and, you know, it felt cool in the daytime, so... Oh, man, did it get down to 50? Maybe not that. Um, certainly the 60s, which is unusual for mid-April. It was warm here today. It was like 55. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, remember, I... I, I know, in- different standards for different parts of the country. Yeah, it's like... You, yeah. 50, 50 was actually my joking thing where after I ratcheted it up by about 20 degrees because I knew it wasn't going to be below freezing. Right. It's just you live in Maine, so right. that that number isn't too off the beaten path given, you know, the weird-ass cold snaps we've been getting. Like, and yeah, I think that about does it for news. Um, so merrily we shall roll along to the interview portion of the broadcast. And this week we have uh, Carol Holmes of, is it Monomy Park? Hey, uh, it's Monomy Park. Yay. That's what I thought. Um, right, so we like to start by getting to know the people behind the people, the company, the so on and so forth. And we like to start by asking, how did you get into video games, both as a hobby and as a profession? Um, So that's kind of a tough one. I grew up without a whole lot of access to games, and uh, actually most of my gaming experiences were either through my older siblings or whenever I'd go over to my cousin's house and they always had something cool like DDR, or I remember one Christmas they had got the Half-Life Orange Box, and it blew my mind. (laughs) And that'll maybe clue you into how late I was coming into games. I think I was, uh, that was probably like 13 or something when the orange box came out, maybe older. And I was working at like Chick-fil-A a little bit after that. And I met the dudes over at GameStop and I managed to get a job there at 16 and then spent like every paycheck for the next year on video games and tried to catch up as quickly as I could. I got like a backwards compatible PlayStation 3, a 360, and then just like went to town whenever they had buy two, get one free uh, sales and stuff. And then I I stayed at GameStop for almost eight years while working uh, like a morning job. And I worked GameStop's evenings and I was going through school and everything. And then I eventually had to quit whenever I moved out of the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did you get hooked up with Monomy Park? Well, uh, I had... So I had moved down to Orlando and was working for a freelance kind of like an indie merch company. And then a little bit after that, I had uh, do, been doing freelance through Wheel of Fine. And that's how I met Nick at Monomi Park because I was working with them. I had got the Slime Rancher account and was making merchandise with them. And I was uh, out in California and I had one of the prototypes for the pillow plush that we did. And I went down to the office, hung out with them had lunch with them, found out they were hiring. It seemed like the stars had aligned in my favor, and I I was a little bit hesitant at first because joining an indie studio, of course, is a little bit risky, and I decided that it was, like, totally worth it, and I, I absolutely wanted to take it. And, yeah, I joined the team in October of last year, and technically I've been working with the team since January of last year. So about a year, year and a half? Yeah, yeah. So, 
I'm going to turn it over to Petty Fan here because um, he's going to be the one asking about Slime Rancher related materials. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, Lord, this game, this game is adorbs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was a pretty big fan before joining the team, so I, I am just like over the moon all the time that my job is to look at adorable slimes and <laughs> I often have to do like game captures and then I get distracted and end up playing the game. <laughs> so before we go into Slime Rancher itself, can you tell us a little bit about the history of Monomi Park? Yeah, so the studio was founded in 2014. We had two co-founders, Mike and Nick. Uh, Nick is the current game director and our like CEO. He led the development on Spiral Knights over at Three Rings, and he also worked with Mike over at Three Rings, and Mike is our lead engineer. And so after about a year or so of working on Slime Rancher, they started hiring. They hired Ian. Uh, I think he was working like part-time at first, but now he's full-time, and now we're up to like... I guess it's nine employees total that are full time, and then we have seven in office. We have two remote people, and yeah, we just moved to a new awesome office. We just hired a new producer. We're gonna be hiring a QA specialist, engineer, and environmental artist pretty soon. So we're growing. It's it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's cool to be along for the ride. Mm -hmm. Um. So. How did how exactly did Slime Maker come to be? I don't know if they like went over that story with you or whatever. Yeah, so this is gonna be secondhand information from what I've I've heard from Nick, who is one of the co-founders. I know that he is a big Elder Scrolls fan and he always talks about how one of the first, I guess, like ideas or the the kind of foundation of Slime Rancher came from whenever you're playing Elder Scrolls, and I think it was Oblivion specifically, where you could make like a ball pit with a whole bunch of items. Like you have hundreds of watermelons in one room. And from there it just kind of like clicked and he started working on a game. And since it was just Nick and Mike to begin with, Nick was actually doing all of the art and he is not like super great at 3d animation so he made like really minimalist designs and that's kind of how he ended up with like rounds like spherical slimes that are just like bouncing around well, you could have fooled me this game is actually pretty <laughs> impressive <laughs> well yeah since then like i said we hired ian who is now the guy that handles a lot of the 3d art and he's gone through and updated a lot of the assets but the the core of the game like you can even look at it at early access and like some of the stuff isn't as elaborate as it is now but it's still more or less the same game as what we launched you know two years ago right has there been any significant updates to the game yeah, so we launched an early access in 2016, and then we actually did the full like 1.0 release August of 2017. And since then, so the August 2017 launch was kind of like the, the idea that Nick had of what Slime Rancher was, and that's what launched. And then since then, we've added two new areas, which explore Ogden, who's one of the NPCs. He's like a really big foodie, and you go and you work with him to collect kukadobas, which he's obsessed with and no one else likes. And then he rewards you with stuff, and you eventually get uh, his ranch, and you kind of expand your little ranch into his, and then you eventually also work with Mochi who is like this, you know, she has a lot of money and she is really strict and just wants to hire you to come do some grunt work for her. And you eventually get her ranch, which is really cool. And then we're working on one more pretty major update that's at least announced. <laughs> we have like a, a development roadmap that we've already done for all of this, even from whenever we were in early access. And that's going to explore one of the other NPCs, Victor. And it's going to be kind of like a, an ex experiment like a science experiment type update there's not a whole lot of info out there but it's going to involve something called slimulations <laughs> has there been any talk of potentially adding like cooperative play or anything like that so like like ranch with a buddy or whatever there's definitely been a lot of talk in the community right now. Our like official answer is that it's not really something that we're able to do. We're still a relatively small team and the way that Slime Rancher is built, it was built out to be a single player experience. It's supposed to be like really thoughtful and like you're out there and you're doing this alone and you're kind of like communicating with your longtime friend out on, on earth. Um, and then that's kind of like the love interest that's supposed to be there for the player to feel like, you know, like you had that connection with someone, but then you're out and you're having to do what you need to do and doing like this fresh start. And yeah, it, 
Slime Rancher was developed to be a single player experience. We've definitely looked into what it would be to create it like into multiplayer, but it's it's not something that is currently on the radar. Fair enough, fair enough. There'd be a, a lot of changes we would have to do to the core of the game. Yeah. In order to make multiplayer work. Um how's like the community feedback and stuff like that been for the game? Uh, overwhelmingly positive to say in short we were nominated for a whole bunch of awards last year and this year we were nominated for a BAFTA we got Game Informer's best simulation game and we were also in like Steam's Platinum Early Access and top new releases so I think the community has really really been into it and I think part of that comes with the way we treated Early Access we were really straightforward with what the game was going to be and what the experience was going to be and we've continued to do free updates to the game since it's released like i said we did the ogden and the mochi update and we're continuing to work on it and develop it and add more stuff to it so i think people that supported us from early access have been super happy and people that are just now getting into it are getting a even more like crazy and flushed out slime rancher game experience which is really cool yeah um let's see um so, like, I've noticed that the game is, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, the matching slime mechanic, was that something that was early in development? The, like, where you can, like, throw, like, I guess the little things they shoot out plorts? Mm -hmm. Was that something that they thought about from the beginning, or was that something that somebody just kind of said, hey, wait, what if we can mix them? I'm actually not sure on that one. I know that a lot of what Slime Rancher is today was already in Nick's head while it was being developed, so I wouldn't be surprised if that was something that he had in mind way ahead of time. But I, I'm really not sure on on that. That would be a really good Nick question. You should tweet him. <laughs> <laughs> I know that his original idea for it was, like, chaos management so he wanted it to be something where things are all over the place and i so, wouldn't be surprised if the plort eating was part of that chaos management like yeah, an like, initial idea that you know because it's it's the one plort is good but then once you introduce another one then things get a little crazy yeah they turn into like the black slime and start eating yeah. other slimes i just had to deal with that a little bit ago yep and then so once that happens for the first time, you're like, oh, what did I do wrong? And how do I prevent this from happening? And all the different slime behaviors, like once you think you have a handle on it and you're like, cool, nothing bad will ever happen on my ranch. Then a tangle slime reaches underneath its corral and grabs something and <laughs> everything gets out of hand again. Mm -hmm. I actually love it when people share gifts on Twitter with us whenever <laughs> slimes are causing trouble on the ranch. Yeah. Just like, why would you do that? Why would you, like, destroy everything that I've built? <laughs> and they so, always put so much personality into the, each slime. It's great. You mentioned that there's one um, DLC coming out. Is there any more planned? Or is that kind of as you go along? So we have, I guess, kind of two updates that are on our development roadmap that have been announced, and we're always working on other crazy, like, cool stuff. If we have ideas or things that we think would make the community really happy, um, there's definitely, I can say, some cool unannounced things coming to Slime Rancher that's not on our development roadmap, but right now there's the automatic update, which is going to be introducing drones, and then the one I mentioned earlier, which is a, a little bit bigger. Automatic update is a little smaller. It's more of like a quality of life update. And the Victor's update is more of like an expansion where you're going to get another area that you can go and do another interesting element of gameplay. Hmm. Um, is there anything, like any other projects Memory Pork is working on right now that you can talk about? Since or we're still actively working on Slime Rancher, we don't really have anything major that we've started. Like, they're definitely 
or more than likely will be a game two. Just right now, Slime Rancher is still huge and our community is still really active and it'd be crazy to draw any attention away from that. Yeah. Bye, guys. We want to make another game. Wait a minute. Why? Yeah, yeah. Right. And and the guys that founded this, Nick and Mike, they have a lot of experience like managing a live game because they worked on Spiral Knights. They worked on like Puzzle Pirates. And they, they've been treating Slime Rancher, even from early access days, much like uh, that live game where they're always listening to the community feedback, always watching Let's Plays and things like that to see what people are really into, maybe what they're having trouble with and how we can get in there and fix it or get in there and add more stuff. Or like I'm always reading the community forums and the Discord to see if someone has some like crazy awesome idea and it's totally viable for us to get that into Slime Rancher. And like, um, also these large slimes, what purpose do they serve? Or is that kind of like a secret thing? The Gordos, the really big ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you'll just have to find out. You should try giving them some food. (laughs) They are big guys, so they're going to... They're going to eat up a lot of your resources. Fair Get enough. Tuned. Yeah. Casual cough, cough, feed me, <laughs> cough, cough. Mm-hmm. Feed me, I will say, more. <laughs> I will say not every single Gordo will give you the same thing. Mm. Um. So is there any other questions that the crew has? <laughs> like, I've got a few. Um. Let's see. Uh, how many kinds of slimes are are there and um how much um variety in each like slime type is there that, like i read that there are some slimes that have ears a tail that kind of thing yeah i think the last time i did the math and this no this hasn't updated yet we did add one more slime but there's 150 or so maybe a little bit more like different hybrids that you can do Wow. And uh, and also in terms of like what uh, are there like main types of slimes? Uh, like do different oh. colors mean things? I the colors don't really mean anything. I think the closest thing that you can get to a kind is we have some some like feline types. Right. And um, what does it actually mean to be a rancher of slimes? Like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, like, like, are you just uh, corralling them? Are you feeding them? Are you breeding them? Yeah, you know, that kind of thing. There are a couple different ranchers on the far, far range, and they all have their own specialties. Beatrix herself, she corrals the slimes, feeds them, kind of treats it more like a farm, but with livestock. And then you're also growing food to feed them and keep them happy, and you can get toys and things like that. Some of the other ranchers on the far, far range, uh, like Ogden, who I mentioned earlier, he is just really into the idea of finding rare foods and making and cooking things. And he's exploring all over the place to find like really unique fruits or something to make a pie with. <laughs> and that's what he's really into. And he may ranch some slimes just to make some bucks to fund his, his explorations. Ranch uh, some slimes. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> And then there's like Mochi, who is just really in it for the money. So she's going to be optimizing her ranch like crazy and only getting like the highest money producing slimes there are. Like, and um, what sort of environments does Slime Rancher have? Right now we have a couple different ones. There's like the Indigo Quarry, which is like a rocky type place. There's like we have a forest place. We have almost like an ancient forest type place too, which is called the wilds. And you go out there and there's these uh, prehistoric type slimes, but not in the way that you think they exist. It's a, an interesting little side thing there. Um, since they're they're prehistoric, they, they aren't really alive, but they live on through their largos or their plorts, which creates largos. So the other slimes eat the plorts and then become like that hybrid slime that you see. That's kind of a neat thing. And then uh, Mochi's place is the Nimble Valley, which is like all pine trees and really pretty and stuff. And we're, I'm trying to think, I don't know if Victor's will be like a new environment like that. I'm trying to think of if we have that fleshed out yet. I don't think we do. I know Nick probably does, but he hasn't shared it with me. <laughs> and um, about the backpack, 
is there only one type of uh, that device, or are there several? Like, do other ranchers have the backpack itself? Well, more, or more like, are there ty- uh, are there different backpacks that can do different things, like suck up the slimes faster, or other such? Not currently. Um, the upgrades that you get to the backpack are mostly like storage related, and then you can also get the ability to hold like water, and you can also use it almost like as like a defense item where you can repel other slimes. But the backpack mostly just serves to suck a whole bunch of things up and transport them around. It's very much so a, a rancher's item. Right. And um, I think that'll about do it for like gameplay questions. I do have some other ones, but uh, those can be a bit down the line. Um, I was wondering if there are any special conditions to get like rare slimes to appear actually, or is it just randomly while you're walking about they can pop up? Mm, as far as I know, there's just a random chance that you might run into them as they a- appear and ex- and kind of like run around the world. Mm. So it's, it's kind of like a nice little surprise as you're exploring yeah. that you'll run into one of the rare ones. Like, I think I saw a gold one a little bit ago, but mm-hmm. then it ran off. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of the trick with them, is that they'll show up when you're not expecting it, and you maybe don't quite know how to deal with I, them yet. I don't have room for you, you panic, hold on. And you just start, like, trying to back it up and shooting stuff everywhere, and that kind of goes into the, the chaos management and fun of Slime Rancher. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you suck something up, and then you shoot them out, do they always come out in the reverse order that you suck them up, or...? Hmm... Or can you change the order? Or sorry, I haven't played the game, so that might be. No, it's okay. I don't know if there's if there's a way that I could even test that. I think it's just that. I mean, if you want to get more into like the the game guts and less of the lore, is that you just suck it up and it has a certain inventory amount in yeah. your slot, and then you shoot that item back out. But okay. I'd be interested if if there's like assigned numbers to each guy that you get. <laughs> So you can make sure if you like have a favorite or something that you back up mm-hmm. accidentally and you shoot him back out and it's your same little guy. Like do they have like do each slime have different like AI or is it just kinda like the classifications all act the same? It's kind of more like the classifications. They all have their own unique scripts that are going, so they'll have different desires that are happening. They're not gonna all have the same desire at the same time. So that can kind of give them personality, and a lot of people see that, like, they'll have a tabby that seems to just really prefer to jump all over the place and doesn't really do much else, and they'll really like him and take him and free-range him on part of the ranch (laughs) and name him and put, like, a fashion pot on him. He's really cute. Mm -hmm. Now, now me, I just had had an observation. I I really like the... uh... I really like the unique format of this game. It, it kind of combines first-person shooters with Luigi's Mansion, and I've, I've, I've never really <laughs> seen anything like that before. That's that's a comparison I've not heard before. That's really that's really cool. Yeah, because Luigi does definitely have that like vacuum, literally a vacuum <laughs> that yeah. you're using to do all sorts of things and interact with the environment with. Yeah, it's like it's like if. Uh, I'm not even sure how to compare this because I don't want to just blurt out a first person shooter because it's not really. It's like it's like adorable portal meets Luigi's <laughs> mansion crossed with monster rancher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It definitely is in you know, all intents and purposes a first person shooter in a way, because you have that perspective and you're shooting things out of your gun, but it takes that genre and kind of turns it on its head and turns it into more of a just really nice and cute and colorful thing that you're going around and you're not really hurting anyone and you're just it's interacting like, with the environment using the gun mechanism. It's more like saccharin Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting combination. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's extremely sweet, but you know, you're basically catching slimers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I I lost the I lost the metaphor somewhere in there. <laughs> I think I got it. I think I got it. I, implying you had it to begin with, there, Mac. <laughs> okay, Mister Interviewer, time for questions. <laughs> <laughs> Smart guy. 
Keep it nice. <laughs> um, also, about the, like, I guess, quest system. Mm-hmm. Like, was that an early edition, or was that something to, like, kind of give the players something to work towards? The range exchange? The one where the, like, rancher comes up and requests stuff? Yeah. That was something that was in one of the early access builds. That was there from really early on. And the idea was that you would interact with the environment, and you'd be, let's say you'd, like, you only want pink tabbies like that's just your favorite and you're doing that and then you go up to the range exchange and they're like oh hey could you get me like phosphor and rock stuff and you're like what i don't have that and you like run out to the world because you see the rewards pretty good and you need the money or whatever and you try and fulfill that request so it kind of adds a little bit like another layer of chaos to your chaos management Mm -hmm. like are the rewards randomized or does like each person have like specific types of rewards they'll give they have like a a type of pool that they'll pull from it's kind of personalized to the rancher both in what they request and what they give Hmm. oh does pumpkins have a question too (laughs) no you're not talkative now okay (laughs) (laughs) my cat my cat has joined the stream (laughs) (laughs) right um I have some questions about uh, systems. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll try my say, best to answer. Yeah. So this game is not only on the well, um, in terms of the PC, is it available for Windows only, or is it on the Mac and oh. uh, Linux systems? Game systems. Awesome. I thought you were about to be talking like, like not consoles, but in-game systems. Like, like what crafting, is this, the or... cycle of this or that? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we, we, can, we can do that, but um, no. that will get very technical. <laughs> yeah, I'm not one of the engineers. I, I, I saw you <laughs> I react can make like some this. Stuff up. <laughs> I, I saw you react like this GIF on the blog of the slime exploding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, like, uh, oh my god, <laughs> boom! <laughs> but platforms, platforms, I got that one. So we're on okay. PC, Mac, and Linux, and then we're on Xbox One, and we will be on PlayStation 4 come this September. Um... I suppose the question there is, is there a particular reason why the PlayStation 4 version is so behind the others? So since we were originally in early access, Microsoft is a lot more lenient in the games and stuff that they interact with. So at the time, it was just easier for us while we were working on the game and entering into that 1.0 release to partner up with Microsoft. Makes sense. Um and then we, we launched with Games for Gold August 1st, which was also the game launch. So it was a pretty cool little, like, one-two punch. Mm-hmm. And uh, is the PlayStation 4 version going to have Pro support? Yeah, yeah, it will. Uh, let's see. Is there any special features coming to the PlayStation 4 that might not be on other systems? We are working on some exclusives that'll come out with our retail release. So we're releasing on retail with Xbox and PlayStation this September. So there's going to be like a physical box copy. And with that, we're working on some nice little, mostly cosmetic exclusives per system. And uh, who are you working with in terms of getting the retail release out? Skybound. So, well, Skybound Games. Skybound, the guys that did, like, Walking Dead and comic books and stuff, they created another, like, sister company that's going to be working on game publishing, and they're the ones that are handling our retail version. Right. And, um, well, I suppose the $64,000 question is, could the Slime Rancher game here appear on the Nintendo Switch? I see that all the time, and... The, the general answer is right now we're focusing on PlayStation 4. Slime Rancher is, like I mentioned before, um, it's kind of developed as that single-player experience, and part of that is we we got away with a lot of like crazy physics stuff because we we're just rendering it for one player, and the physics is part of the trouble that we've seen as we've thought about and explored the idea of being on Switch, so it would be a matter of figuring out how to get that to work. But um, right now, for the most part, we're just focusing on PlayStation. And after that, who knows? Anything could happen. We have crazy awesome community. Like I said, they're, you know, Slime Rancher's 
huge and it'd be crazy for us to drop support on it and we're continuing to develop stuff so in the future anything is possible right now focus on playstation makes sense now and yeah i can uh that is a thing with the when it comes to porting things to nintendo switch you have to take into account the fact that it's a different system in terms mm -hmm. of like yeah it's it's a lot more different than people think. Like one of the things that I see just in general with people asking for games to go on Switch is like, oh, but Skyrim's on it. And Skyrim is a huge and awesome game, but it's also pretty darn old at this point. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's, it's kind of like people using Crisis as a, <laughs> a benchmark today, which would be a little silly. Of course, well, Crisis 3 is the system killer. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a bit more than that. Um, there are, like, Doom is on the, you know, the 2016 version of Doom is on it, and mm -hmm. there are some other games, but you, you kind of have to make your sacrifices to get the game to work on the Nintendo Yeah, system. and yeah. part of the charm of Slime Rancher is the crazy physics, like, seeing those little dudes jumping and bouncing all over the place. Like, we, we wouldn't really want to sacrifice that if we were to put it on Switch, so it'd be a matter of trying to figure out how to keep the core of Slime Rancher if we were to put it on Switch, and that's going to be a real big puzzle. No doubt. All right, um, I'm good with my line of questioning, so back over to you, Penny. Um, kind of a side thing. It, do you... Like, I know a lot of games do this, but would you consider, like, a physical release of the PC version? Like, especially in Europe and stuff like that? Maybe. I don't think Skybound has that on their radar right now. I think they're focused on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One releases. But I wouldn't be surprised if at some point there's a physical release of Slime Rancher on PC. Mm -hmm. It's not I, It's not something we're currently working on, but who knows? Yeah. Um, so I think that's about everything unless I, cause I'm out of a question unless anybody else has anything. Given, did you ever, did you, I, I know you said that the design of the slimes was partially because it's a simple design, but do you know if there was any acrobatics done to make sure that slimes were different than other legally distinct slimes? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, okay, so I, I thought your question was going to be one thing, and then it became another thing. Sorry. So, <laughs> no, I know Answer that both. the original... Answer both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will. So I'll answer your actual question, and then I'll answer what I thought you were going to ask. So the uh, the design of the slimes, you were asking if they were originally inspired by some other type of slime. Well, and... not just if they were inspired, but, like, if you had to make sure that they were different. Oh, uh... Yeah, like, it, you can't make them, like, I think... specifically that shape or whatever. I think, I mean, there's the idea of slimes on all sorts of RPGs and games and stuff all over the place, so... It's hard to well, say. I mean, the most uh, iconic being Dragon Quest. Yeah, they there's like that. Virgin's and I mean, kisses. even, sure. And there's the mm -hmm. ones, even in Spiral Knights, there were slimes and they were kind of like cube shaped. Uh, I think they were called like jellies or something. I didn't work on Spiral Knights and I'm not super familiar. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> I didn't really play it. <laughs> but I know that the original idea for the slimes was just that they were round slime dudes. And I don't think there was anything specific, like any hoops that were jumped through to make them different because the idea was already kind of like it was based off of something that's everywhere and pretty common. And there aren't any uh, raindrops shaped slimes outside of maybe gold is the closest but it's a little different mm -hmm. and then uh, the question I thought you were going to ask which was going to be a cool game design question was if all the slimes were purposefully like different shapes and they are they're supposed to be like the silhouettes are supposed to be different from each other so you can recognize it at a glance in addition to the colors I had noticed that when watching and it is I mean for the amount that you can make slimes different and still be slimes, I think you did a pretty good job of differ yeah. differentiating between the different kinds. All the silhouettes are very intentionally different from each other. Originally in Early Access, and this is something that the community brings up, we had a blue puddle slime, and it was basically a pink slime that was blue. And That's... since the puddle slime has changed to be more of like a splooty, like, you know, puddly thing, and a lot of people request for us to bring back the the poor just color changed pink slime <laughs> <laughs> that way that way if uh, all the diodes behind your uh, 
LCD LEDs goes kaput, you can still play the game in <laughs> black and white. <laughs> yeah, you totally could. You absolutely could play Slime Rancher in black and white. Also, and it does help to, with a lot of people that are like colorblind or have other issues. And I, I, kids right. play the game too to have more, like the, the more diverse cast of slimes you can have, the more enjoyable the game will be because you don't have to like, is that pink or is that like maroon or is that like oh what my. color is that thing? <laughs> oh my. Is it the light pink one or the hot pink one? Mm -hmm. or is it chartreuse? <laughs> Perhaps salmon. <laughs> I was gonna, I, I'm glad you brought up the color blindness thing because I, I wanted to also point out to you know be a little more sensitive about that kind of thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So thank you for saving me the trouble. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess also since you can mix slimes, is there a benefit to doing that? Mm -hmm. Or yeah, you'll is... notice whenever oh. you have them mixed, they'll actually produce both. So you feed one slime and you get kind of like double the yield. And then if you feed them their favorite food, you'll get even more yield. Does each type have like a favorite food or is it just... Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they each have their favorites. So in and universe, there's... slime ranching is an industry. What is the purpose of this industry? <laughs> all sorts of things. Each plort, if you read their descriptions on the Slimepedia have all sorts of different uses. So I think, uh, and you can correct me on this if I'm wrong, but I think like the pink plort, for example, is used in like filler <laughs> in like bad processed food. <laughs> that would yeah. explain why it pink, yields so little slime, money. Yeah, yeah the, and then the... like puddle plort is used by like really uh, people that that drink it instead of water and claim that they can totally tell the difference. <sighs> guys, like, guys, water and special like bottled puddle plort based water. The the dark secret of this game is that the slimes are actually made out of unobtainium. <laughs> now don't give the ending away, Mac. <laughs> Soylent green is metal slimes. <laughs> <laughs> well then, I was not expecting him to go there. Well done. <laughs> Yeah, I think oh, uh, can canonically, I don't think anyone eats slimes themselves. There is, uh, if you look at one of our artists, there's plenty of art of slimes licking other slimes. <laughs> and I think that's mostly just the uh. artist's interpretation. There's like a honey slime, and uh, she always mentions that she wouldn't mind giving one a lick <laughs> to see how it wow. tastes. <laughs> and there's definitely debate hmm. on whether or not uh, everyone in the office would be okay with like licking up <laughs> honey slime. This is like this is like the debate about how exactly you apply gels in the Tales of them series. Oh God, no! Please get them out of here. <laughs> do you rub it on? Do you gnash it between your teeth? I mean, how do you right. use it? Uh, Fantasia just throw was it. very explicit about them being gummy candies. Yeah. We're getting into a whole weird area. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's best to reel it back before we go into. Yeah. Do you tie them in a knot? Do you tie them in a bow? Can you throw them over your shoulder like a continental soldier? <laughs> so, any other questions? Any last questions? Um, Pricing. I guess that's really where we can end this off on. Ooh, there's a sale on the Humble Store in Steam. I don't think that's happening anymore. Yeah, oh, like, I think that ended like day before yesterday. Boom. <laughs> but it does go on sale from time to time. But right now, the the basic price is nineteen ninety nine mm -hmm. for hours and hours and hours and hours of fun. Indeed, a bargain at twice the price. And like platforms again is what Xbox, PS four is coming, Mac, mm -hmm. Windows, Linux, Windows, Mac, yeah, yep. And is it pretty much everything. humble as a DRM free version, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, because some humble games you still have to, you know, use Steam. Yeah, yeah, and humble, I believe you get both, so you get mm -hmm. Steam and you get the DRM free version, which is super duper great. Indeed. As someone who has purchased way too many games, more than I will ever play, it's always <laughs> nice to know. I'm pretty sure it's everyone here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's I, I've at least gotten better. I think the last two Steam sales, I didn't buy anything. And it was a really weird feeling. Congratulations, you've won. 
I looked though, and I definitely thought about it. <laughs> you can think right. about it, but don't but, do it. Yeah, it, it started <laughs> because my my desktop kind of went kaputz whenever I moved to California. Uh, oh, turns no. out putting a desktop in a, a box and putting it on an airplane is maybe not a good idea. <laughs> the computer so I, tech I, in me just died right there. Thanks. I did. I removed a, a lot of the stuff and I wrapped it all up very nicely. I even bought like special foam to put around it and it did not. <laughs> I removed a lot of the stuff, but sadly the important <laughs> stuff was still in there. It broke. <laughs> If you had placed it in a Red Rider wagon and dragged it behind your bicycle, it might have had a better chance of survival. Yeah. If you duct taped it to I the back like of the giant... plane, it might have had a better chance of survival. I bought a giant box. I put, like, at least a foot of insulation around it. I taped the crap out of the box. And still, somehow, it got destroyed. <laughs> I had I had an army guy... I work in the computer retail repair business, and I had an army guy. Maybe he was Air Force. The branch of service is not important. He had his gaming computer with liquid cooling shipped mm -hmm. from Phoenix to Tucson, which is 110 miles. Oh no! It did not. It did not survive. <laughs> oh. Yeah. All right then. Um. I think that'll about do it. Uh, Kara, I'd like to thank you for being on the program this week. No problem. Thank you guys for having me. And thank you for being amazingly fun and putting up with my <laughs> shenanigans. <laughs> no problem. If you have any other weird burning questions about Slime Rancher, I don't know what else you could ask, but you can always <laughs> message me. And the game is Slime Rancher. It's available on... All uh, PC, Mac, Linux, Xbox One coming in September to the PlayStation 4. Um, priced at uh, $20. Uh, base price. There's a soundtrack edition on Steam that's uh, $26.98. Um, soundtrack uh, on its own is $9.99. How much is the physical version uh, going to be? It hasn't been announced yet. Okay, so keep an eye out for those details in the months ahead. Um, Petty Fan, play us to the next segment. Alright, so welcome to the topic of discussion. And this week we are talking about Shenmue. Um, in case you missed the news a couple days ago... Uh, Sega announced that they are finally pulling the trigger on that HD remastering that really needed to happen. <laughs> because there's no great way to play Shenmue on modern systems, as it there is no way to play them on modern systems. <laughs> if, you want, mm -hmm. if you wanted to play those games, you had to have a Dreamcast or an Xbox. Oh, I have I have both. <laughs> was was Shenmue one released on Xbox? Yes, it oh, was, and I own it. Huh? Was not. Like, in fact, they had to release a companion DVD um, containing all the cutscenes from the first Shenmue game, alongside Shenmue Two on the Xbox. Because, oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that game never released on that system, and. The sequel takes place immediately after the events of um, Shenmue 1. Like, it, it, didn't they set it up like there was going to be a Shenmue 3 and then they didn't? Um, oh god, no. No, let's not get into this. I'm pretty sure we're going to make someone cry. Well, yes they did, but uh, Shenmue mm -hmm. 3 is happening. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Shenmue 3 yep. wasn't well, happening. I mean, I, I mean at the time. We're talking yeah. a long time wait. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we are talking about a dozen years. Yeah. Uh, considering the uh, Kickstarter for Shenmue 3 was 2015, if I'm recalling correctly. Something but, like uh, that. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it's been a long wait. And it's hard to say how long the wait's going to be still because Shenmue 3 is in production. But mm. even though it's being used... It's being developed with, like, modern tools and all that. The development team is much smaller than the, the one that worked on Shenmue. 
the, which, the original mm. one, or even the sequel, because which was, yeah, yeah, which was one of the most expensive games produced at the time, given its mm -hmm. complexity and cinematic nature and all that good stuff. Yeah. yeah, in fact, at one point it was the most expensive game of all time, right. and its budget still looks pretty high in today's world. Not a not quite maybe uh, tip top triple A stuff anymore because that can go into like hundred million territory. But estimates we don't actually know how much the game costs, but estimates about forty to eighty million. Oof. Yeah, mm -hmm. like. And granted, some of that flowed into the sequel, Shenmue 2, but uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of your reason why Shenmue never got a third game. Yeah, that's, uh, that's as they say, a stack of bills to choke a pig. <laughs> <laughs> and keep in mind, this was Sega during the Dreamcast era, where they were hemorrhaging red ink like uh, nobody's business. Yeah, so, like if... This sold well enough. If it didn't cost so much, it might have actually turned a profit. Yeah, it, it's kind of it's a very modern problem. If I'm being honest, it's like you know, a game X sells two, three million copies. Well, under normal circumstances, that would be good. It's like you still didn't hit the break-even point because that turned out to be like five, six million. And as far as sales, Shenmue One sold about a little over a million copies, which. Mm -hmm back in those days was pretty respectable um even um pretty fantastic not enough to cover development costs like i said shinru was would have had to sell like three million to five million copies to cover yeah it would yeah like nearly as many um like dreamcasts that were out there possibly but um shinru was also positioned as one of the um, killer apps of the Dreamcast. One of the games that was going to sell Dreamcast. It's just, when it came out, the Dreamcast was not quite officially doomed, but it was doomed. Like, mm -hmm. we're, like it came out 2000. If I'm recalling correctly. 1999. Yeah, 1999 in Japan, 2000 over here. Um, I, ha I had it in my possession in August of 1999. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Which, by the way, was pre-release. Somebody got him off the back of a truck. <laughs> <laughs> and the SWAT right. team comes in. <laughs> yeah, that was 20 years ago, my friend. <laughs> Statute of limitations is up, and it wasn't even grand larceny. <laughs> right. Maybe it was if they got a lot of them. Oh, I got mine. So I got mine. So it came out in September of 1999, and I got mine in August of 1999. There weren't even games for it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't know how. I don't know how my guy got it, but I got it, and I got it fifty bucks below release cost. <laughs> what? Wow. Are you sure it's even legitimate? Um, it plays all the games. So that's all I give a shit about. <laughs> I still have it to this day. <laughs> anyway. My ill-gotten, my ill-gotten games. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of ill-gotten. <laughs> yeah. So. Another, like, Shenmue was, uh, how do I put this? It's an open world game that was both ahead of its time and kind of behind the time. Mm. Yeah, there are certain aspects of it that could almost put it in, like, what would be today considered walking simulator. Yeah. yeah. Well, but that, then that it also saying... goes into action sections as well. Yeah. It switches gameplay styles, although, um, like, when we tend to think of uh, open world games, we tend to think of sandboxes. We think Grand Theft Auto, Just Cause. Mm -hmm. um, Shenmue isn't that. It's a lot more micro-focused, you know, neighborhoods and stuff. But it also contains a level of craftsmanship that you don't really see in a giant-sized open world game. You know, mm -hmm. little details and all that stuff. That's part. Of, that's part of the, the reason why this game costs so much. Like, yeah, isn't it like a one-to-one -one recreation of that area in Japan? Um, probably, probably uh, of that time period as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Which it's is only it... like a couple blocks, right? But yeah, it, it's a couple blocks. But once again, we're talking about the Dreamcast era. Yeah. Like, 
this is still pretty big on the uh, on those terms. And what really brings the really put the game ahead of the curve is all of the sites um like people today you know grand theft auto say san andreas added a whole bunch of side questing like um weight training and video poker and what have you shenmue had that from the beginning like mm -hmm. uh it wasn't just about following the main plot line it's doing things like playing darts Wait, and for um, context gta at this time was wasn't it still the top down i guess yeah, still, shooter ish yeah it's still the top down days and and like i said uh, the 3d grand theft auto games really weren't doing this kind of thing until san andreas and really got into it in about uh, grand theft auto 4. Mm -hmm. you know but you know you could play uh, pachinko um a highlight was playing full arcade renditions of classic Yu Suzuki games. Like, uh, spent a pl uh, spent plenty of time doing that um, because you had games like Hang On, Outrun, Virtua Fighter. Yeah. Um, a favorite of mine was um, Space Harrier. And these were the uh, the full games, not like stripped down like mini games, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, they were the full games, which, uh, once again, we're talking 1999-2000 here, so um, seeing that in games was still pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. like, keep in mind, like, the PlayStation era is, like, when we're really seeing, the, like, the first um, really accurate uh, arcade compilations of uh, classic Golden Age arcade games. Um, and this is... And then we get into the PlayStation 2 era, where we just compilation ha uh, haven. But that's a story for another day. Like, but yeah, it's like, and you could also focus on collecting things, um, like the big one or capsule toys, um, which were procured over various means, and a lot of them were Easter eggs, various Sega characters, like. Yeah, like, I think there are some of them, if you progress the story to a ter certain point, you couldn't get some of them and stuff like that. Uh, sounds about right. I'm like, it, 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 that certainly sounds like something that would happen in those days. I'm like, mm. yeah, not every video game convention was wrongfully killed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so Shenmue is, like, doing so much new shit at the time. Oh, and just to show you how new everything was, this is a game that boasted about having QTEs, front and center. <laughs> like, yeah, this is possibly the actual progenitor of it, not God of War. No, no, this, this is the modern progenitor of QTEs. So, blame this one. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, at the time, having something to do in cutscenes was novel and interesting. It's just then several different franchises ran the concept so far into the ground that no one likes it anymore. Mm. Like, I forget, yep. did Shenmue QTEs, if you failed them, did it outright kill you, or did you just try them again? You'd have to re... You'd fun you'd have I thought to a lot of them put you on a different track or something. No, no, no. You have to um, beat the QTEs to continue. Yeah. But it's not like, um, like where some of them nowadays, a it's a jump scare, almost like QTE thing, where if you're not on the ball, you're basically dead and have to restart from a save. Actually, it is. Mm. Oh, yeah. oh boy. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it is that. Like, but yeah, it, it's like, anyway, th this was doing so much new stuff that Sega coined a new pretentious um, genre label that never stuck. They called it the full reactive eyes entertainment or free genre. Yeah, it, it's not hard to see why that didn't become a thing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure back in the day, like you had to in Japan, you had to have like your game's actual genre on the PlayStation packaging or something, and you got some gems back then for people who were doing something new. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you did. And of course, there's a pretty robust fighting system because, um, once again, this game was helmed by Yu Suzuki, legendary Sega developer. One of which, one of the games he did was a little thing called Virtua Fighter. 
So, yeah, that kind of bled into the fighting system here. Obviously not quite as deep as Virtua Fighter, but there's a lot there's a lot going on there, let's just say. At least until the QTEs hit. Right. <laughs> Yeah. And, of course, I would be remiss if we didn't remember the enduring legacies of Shenmue. That is to say, the mimetic parts. You know, <laughs> forklift racing and sailing. <laughs> yeah, the forklift made a return in All-Stars Racing. That was requested. <laughs> Those people are <laughs> monsters. Yeah, well, well, it was the forklift in um, Sega All Stars Racing in Transform. The D- he's do he- he's got a Sega arcade cabinet, <laughs> like so. Obviously, an upgrade. <laughs> yeah. Probably has um, better turning. Yeah, um, there was also a thing called uh, the Shenmue Passport, which was an online component. Admittedly, I never got to fiddle around with that because by the time I got around to playing Shenmue, it was 2002, and you know, Dreamcast really didn't have online support by that by then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we kind of touched upon it in the beginning of this, but so Sega did some fuckery with Shenmue too, <laughs> or rather, Microsoft did. So. Shenmue 2 was released for the Dreamcast in Europe and Japan. America, it only saw a release on the Xbox. And this was a problem because one of the touted features of Shenmue 2 was it had one of those save deals. If you have a save file from Shenmue 1, you could transfer it over to Shenmue 2, and all of the stuff you unlocked there would transfer over. As well as story decisions. Yes, Yep. And yeah, that that really and an American Dreamcast owner really couldn't do that um, because either you had to have an import copy and you know save compatibility wasn't really a thing, or you bought the Xbox version which had everything unlocked. Yeah. So. Basically, the Xbox version put you on the like true ending route. Yeah, and. But these yeah, games also had, like, a, a time limit-based gameplay, right? Like, in-game time limit? Uh, yes. Yes, it like did. Like, you had so many days to get to an ending before such and such a thing happened? Yeah, you were being mm-hmm. timed, like, um, I forget how long it was, but you did, ha- like, you, um, Shenmue 1, you did have to get to, like, Londi's ship. Otherwise, he would leave. Like, time is a pretty important factor. Like, like time management is a pretty important fa- uh, factor. Uh, <laughs> reminds me, reminds me, reminds me of another game for the PlayStation Two, Ephemeral Fantasia. Not like <laughs> that, but no. Like, like you literally had to restart the game if you missed this guy ten hours into the game. Like, admittedly, once again, like, I did play Shenmue to completion. Shenmue 2 I've never touched, once again, explaining that situation. So, that's another reason why I'm looking forward to the HD remastering. It's got the version I never played on, a, you know, readily available. Mm-hmm. Is that coming to PC or just consoles? Uh, PC, uh, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. The same store is already open, so you can go ahead and bang a wish list if you want. <laughs> As it turns out, I'm on Sega Europe's press list. Like, so I got a PR about it. Uh, not too, you know, when it got announced. Yeah, I think it's going for $20, $30. For both games? Anyway, That's not bad. Anyway, not. my assertions over Shenmue... I liked it well enough, but I never got super into it like some people did. I, I've heard Shenmue 2 is a much better game, but I can't... Uh, once again, I'm kind of shooting in the dark with that one. You know, I own a copy of it for the Xbox, and I've never played it. 
I'm like, hmm. I can definitely be How that. dare you? I mean, <laughs> says the guy who lives in a house made out of unplayed 3DS cards. <laughs> like, anyway. Um, so any final words on the Shenmue franchise? Um, it's a game franchise. That happened. <laughs> mm-hmm. Press button to win. Wait. <laughs> I the franchise I'm interested in I'm getting to isn't, actually play myself. Wouldn't, wouldn't, isn't that technically the trope namer for that genre? <laughs> Press X to not die. Right. If, 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 it's, if, it's, if it invented a freaking quick time events, yeah, kind of. All right, um, so that'll about do it for this installment of Fragments of Silicon. Uh, the week ahead. Let's see. Nothing happening on Friday this week. Um, Sunday, we've got three reviews to get through. We've got Extinction, uh, Project Rhombus, and Duped. Like, uh, Extinction is the Attack on Titan knockoff you've probably heard about. Seems to have gotten some, you know, major review eyes. Like, but it was only one code, so we got a free game of fix. Project Rhombus. Uh, it's literally an Undertale fight. Like yeah, one, of the- one particular <laughs> Undertale boss fight. Yeah, we'll be talking more about um, turned into a music uh, rhythm game, really. But like, about as expansive as you could do with the concept, I think. Um, and Duped is a uh, action platformer, and the main mechanic there is duplication. Uh, hence, hence the name. The name. Yes. And coming up next week, so we do have a Tuesday show scheduled. Um, I believe he's confirmed. Like at least uh, that seemed to be the indication when I, you know, it's like. You know, he mentioned I got the date wrong because I wrote that early in the morning and, you know, th- mistakes happen when it's like six in the morning and you're writing to people in Europe. Mm-hmm. You know, anyway, um, we'll be having Marco Monomir Mono, uh, Guardia of Demi Monde Studios. Uh, he's Italian, I believe. Uh, he, he made the game Octahedron, the latest from the Square Enix Collective. It's, I believe we touched upon this game um, when we talked to Phil not too long ago, but it's a pure platformer, uh, you could say. Uh, that is to say, the platforming is itself the point. You know, no action platformer or puzzle platformer or any of that. This is all about jumping and jumping to the rhythm of techno. Like, hopefully we can get some codes for that. So we'll see. Um, so next Wednesday, um, bit up in the air. Our scheduled guest for that had to cancel out. No real reason given. Sometimes that happens. Uh, currently working to see if we can get a replacement. Uh, we're, uh, some PR people there. Um, probably going to have more on that on Sunday, hopefully. Like, and if not, well, we'll just do the old standbys. You know, it, it sometimes happens, so. Until Sunday, I will wish you good gaming. All right, I put the post.